You know, it's not many times I can say this. A major sports outlet actually has us as a positive thing happening in 2025. So, here's what it is. The Athletics ranked the Bengals first among non-NFL playoff teams most likely to make the playoffs in 2025. And, listen, okay? I can sit here and say, well, no dip, Sherlock Holmes. We were supposed to be a playoff t- t- this year if it wasn't for Joe Burrow's injury. But, with how much usually the mainstream media slash sports media loves to talk down on us and act like we're nothing and we just we're pretty much lucky to even be in the playoffs at this point or lucky as a team to even be in any way a positive direction. It's just like that little bit of positivity. Let's talk about it. All right, so yeah. Uh, This is what they had to say about our chances of making the playoffs next upcoming season. They said their experience, they're going to experience some changes, especially on offense, with wide receiver T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd both set to be free agents, Jones wrote. But the Bengals have a strong core as as their narrow miss of the playoff, despite Joe Burrow's absent, reflects. Burrow should bounce back, and with him... Uh, with him, should return Cincinnati's hopes for contention. Cincinnati is primed to get back to, into the postseason as it faces a last-place schedule of opponents in the return of Burrow. The quarterback noted last week that he's hoping to throw in OTAs following wrist surgery. Yes, yeah, so he's going to, right now, at this moment in time, going to be back right around that OTA training camp time period, which is actually really nice because usually Joe does not survive training camp and preseason in any way possible. But it looks like he will be around that time period, so he will be back. And I will say that last place schedule is actually going to be very freaking nice, let's be honest. Um, that's the only positive things about going 1-5 in, in the division this year is we don't have as tough of a schedule next year. We still have a tough schedule, like, it's not an easy schedule, and if we pull up our opponents real fast of next year, it's, it's still going to be, and in my opinion, right, my opinion here, it's going to be a tough schedule, but again, I think we can win. I think we can split with the AFC North next year. I think we can beat the Cowboys. I think we can beat the Chiefs, beat the Chargers, beat the Giants, beat the Panthers, and beat the Titans. That's what? Okay, well, first off, I don't think we're going to win the AFC games in their house. I think we'll win in the jungle. But, again, like I said, split. That's right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six? Yeah, six wins. I think we beat the Patriots. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen and three. We lose three games to the AFC North. I think that's very realistic and a realistic possibility that we could win the conference next year. If Joe can stay healthy, not going what, the whole entire season, I think we could be a playoff slash conference chance here. Having the week play schedule, and hopefully as long as schedule makers put it in the correct orientation and direction, shouldn't be that difficult for us to make the playoffs and potentially have a good run. And even to the point that they bring up here, losing, you know, we're going to lose Tyler Boyd most likely. We probably will lose Tyler Boyd. Whether or not he goes with Brian Callahan, he goes over there to Carolina or Tennessee or wherever he goes. I don't think we're going to lose T. Higgins. And I think that's going to be the major point of why we're going to be so successful in 2024 season slash 25 playoffs is because we're not going to lose T. Higgins. We're going to franchise tag him. We're going to figure that out. Get Jamar Chase on the contract, and then that. I will say, to the point of this article, I think a better representation of saying why we might struggle a little bit wouldn't be really that. I know they're talking about the offense here, but I think really the biggest struggle would be the potential of we're going to lose Cheeto, we're going to lose Tyler Boyd, we're also going to lose DJ Reader potentially, right? And that's going to be the real detrimental hit to us is we're going to have to replace Cheeto, which this year doesn't seem like that big of a deal with how he's, you know, his injuries and he's never been the same since his injuries. 
Um, but DJ Reader is going to be a huge loss. I mean, that's going to be a humongous loss if we lose him. So I think that's really what they should have kind of homed in on on the article sake because those are the actual players I think it's a huge, like, lose those guys. And this team's going to look a lot different on defense. And with our defense last year already being a problem, I'm sorry, this this season, but last, you know, this season, I'll just say this season. This season is our defense and our run game, or stopping the run game, and our defense getting teams off the field, DJ Rito leaving is going to be a huge detriment. But again, that's going to come down to free agency, through the draft, and figuring that out, which I think we will be able to do that. And it really depends on how we draft, and that's really what it comes down to. I think we do need to get a safety in the free agency or the draft. Maybe not the first, second, or third round, but sometime in the draft, we need to get a safety who can play the run and can also play in the box. And I think that's something that we're really lacking with when it comes to not having Jesse Bates anymore or Von Bell is we don't have a safety that can play in the box. Jordan Battle is really good, but Jordan Battle is still young and developing. I don't think Dax Hill can play in the box, and he's not a one support safety. Um, and Nick Scott was a nothing burger. So I feel like we need to get someone in that type of circumstance, that position, and we should be fine, but we're going to need to work on that. So again, like I said, there's a lot of things to look at, but I love to see the sports you know, media outlets actually saying that we're going to make the playoffs. That's actually like the most positive thing I've seen from sports media probably this whole entire section here. Ever since Jake Browning fell off the face of the earth, it's been pretty much, oh, uh, Bengals are done. Bengals are done. Joe's not going to come back healthy. Joe's not going to play. He's not going to be the guy. He's blah, blah, all this other crap. And T. Higgins is going. Doom and gloom. Tyler Boyd's going. This guy's going. This guy's going. It's, it's going to be Bengals dark years again. Like, I see a lot of negativity, right, from sports media outlets. And that's not even talking about Nick Wright. Because if I bring in Nick Wright, he would even go beyond that because his Chiefs right now just went ahead and beat the Bills. And I don't I think he hates Josh Allen. Something like that. I, I'm pretty sure he dislikes Josh Allen. But you know what? At least with all the negativity, that's usually when we thrive. When we are the underdogs, when we are the team that people look down on and think that we can't do it, we get the job done. And that's just how we play, man. I don't know why I'm holding this like it's an, a, a, a brand advertisement. No, my sister got me this for Christmas. It's funny because she asked me, she's like, what do you want for Christmas? I'm like, anything Bengals. And she was like, oh, well, um, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, anything Cincinnati Bengals. So she got me that. She got me a hoodie and literally everything Bengals. So it worked out in the end, though. Guys, tell me down below your thoughts and opinions. I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces.